We are software for non-LCA experts. I think the top-down approach that we are using is quite unique, this allocation system. And that's why we Helix, specifically Helix, clicks especially well with large product portfolios. We have a lot of knowledge in-house also to model that correctly and to verify that in the right way. That's a very big benefit that we have. Welcome. I would like to thank everyone for participating and using this time for the people in Europe, maybe during your lunch or maybe for other, it's breakfast or dinner. Um, but in the next 45 minutes that we scheduled for today, um, I'm going to walk you around our Helix software, do a quick recap on what LCAs actually are and make this an interactive webinar too. So prepare a uh, demonstration for today um, with two Q&A moments. Um, my name is Floris Schix and I'm the commercial lead here at EcoChain. In that role, I help a lot of companies to start their journey of measuring environmental impact. In this, I am active in a lot of conversations to see where the needs are, um, maybe some best practices. I take a look at the data that's usually available and about the end goal. And I will make sure to address all those points also in the next 45 minutes. We are here for a common topic and a common goal, and that's measuring the environmental impact of your products. I would like everyone to be on the same page there. And I completely understand there might be people with a bit more knowledge or different types of knowledge, but I'm going to be using this term a lot later on in the presentation. And that's a life cycle assessment, an LCA. An LCA measures the impact of products to five different stages. At first, it's the raw material that goes into a product. Afterwards, it's the processing. So when that material is processed inside a factory and everything that happens there, we also include the packaging here usually. Then afterwards, we take a look at the transportation to your customer after the factory. And this is what we call cradle to gate LCA. Afterwards, and this is more important for different types of products, we take a look at the use phase of a product when it's actually used and in the end, the waste or end of life. So maybe you recycle it or it goes to landfill or incinerate it. This is also something we calculate the impact on. This is becoming more and more um, commercially driven. We see that you have to show this to your customers. They're demanding it. We see that you have to show it because of new upcoming regulations. So in the past, this was just maybe a thing for smaller impact brands, but now we really see that this is becoming a core activity of any company that we talk to. This is why it's important to start measuring your LCAs and start creating them. And this can often be seen as, as quite a journey. And I'm gonna walk you through the beginning and in the end, of course, the results and what action points you can take afterwards. It's important to notice that in this presentation, I will focus on a full LCA. Um, there are some different opinions about it. Sometimes we talk just about a carbon impact but a full LCA, according to most standards, has data on about 31 different impact categories. So for every of those stages that I described earlier, we link that then to all these different impact categories to get a complete overview of that as well. Maybe you can imagine that CO some products might be low on CO2, but very high on ozone depletion or water use. You want to know this impact as well. And I'm going to show you how we color colorate this afterwards in the Helix tool. Then how do we do this? Because we received some questions already from companies. Okay, um, I see the importance of measuring the impact of my products, either regulatory or commercially driven. I have a very big product portfolio. How do I do this? Well, luckily, um, around 11 years ago or 12 years ago, the Dutch construction sector was quite mature um, in its environmental maturity. There, when you were building a highway at that point, you already had to showcase the impact of your product. And here, the same problem originated already. Um, we have a lot of different products, maybe a portfolio of about 100 to 200. We can't assess each product individually. It's too costly. We, we have to go to an external consultant each time. Uh, it's not dynamic. So then we started EcoChain. So we're quite old in the sustainability measurement industry. Um, and there we used a principle called activity-based costing, which is a finance principle where you allocate the price of a product throughout its entire life cycle. 
we used this dynamic and started and developed a methodology called activity-based footprinting. What this does is that it takes a look at an entire production location and we start at the top. So we take a look what goes in in terms of water use, gas usage, and electricity usage, for instance. It's the first step. Then afterwards, we link this to the different processes that are happening inside a facility. To those processes, then we link the products and to those products, then we link the materials. What you then get is a digital twin of a production location, of a facility. This digital twin, once it has been modeled correctly by us, I'm going to walk you through the steps after, can generate LCAs of all the products that are in that system at once afterwards. So it can give you those insights. It can show you which of your products has the biggest impact on different impact categories, and you don't have to assess each product individually. It's a very big difference in terms of cost and time for that reason. This is the first step. And of course, we more and more often see, luckily, that um, LCAs have to be third party verified or maybe presented in different formats. So for that reason, we also have a functionality called bulk verification, where an auditor or third party can enter the tool, do a process verification of the facility, and then automatically all the LCAs that come out of it are verified at once as well. And we've been doing this for quite some time. I'm very excited to show you exactly how it works. But the essence and the logic of the things I'm about to show you today all derive from this top-down allocation approach, which in the end enables you to get insights into a large product portfolio. That's the methodology of it. Of course, I would like to spend most of our time today in the action and showing you the Helix tool. So we're going to walk you through the different steps um, and we, we are doing a Q&A, first Q&A, halfway in the tool as well. For the people who are completely new, to EcoChain, um, we are a SaaS web-based solution, which means that different users can log into the tool with different security rights, for instance, and access it in a digital environment. So it's not an on-site installation. There's three main components of the software. First of all, we report on an annual basis. Um, so in this environment, it's a manufacturer of pet bottles that I'm about to show you. Currently, we, have, we are reporting in the year 2020. In addition, you can make scenarios, which I will highlight later on in the demonstration, where you can, for instance, change a future change of electricity mix, or maybe a new supplier, or any other changes that you might want to test out virtually before implementing them. In addition, it also gives the functionality to do year-on-year -year comparisons, because you might want to show the, the process or improvements that you made as well. There's two other main components of the tool, and I will walk through each step of them. Um, but we have an input page where you see the top-down methodology that I highlighted earlier. So we start on a company level, then a process level, and then a product level. And then afterwards, we have an overview of all the different products that come out of this location. You see hotspots in terms of material and processes. And we can generate reports according to a lot of different templates. So I'm also going to show you some of the templates and audits that come out of the tool after. As mentioned, we start at the top of a facility. And what goes in on the top, it's water use, it's gas usage or electricity usage, for instance. We can do two things here, and that's going to be the logic throughout the entire tool and the entire input page. There's always a possibility to use database data, external database data, um, if you want to know the environmental impact of your input. We have a direct link for that reason to an external database called EcoInvent. And EcoInvent is a peer-reviewed scientific database with about 80,000 different materials. These can be used to create a verifiable LCA in the end as well. But you also might be a bit further in your sustainability journey or maybe some of your suppliers give you primary data, you can always put that data also um, as an improvement to the database points. How that works is that when we take a look at the total emissions of a facility, um, and right now we are at the top, so we're looking at electricity, this is a direct link to eco event. So let's say you're in Canada, you are in the state uh, New Brunswick, we just need to know your kilowatt hours consumed and the type of electricity mix. 
and then we will see uh, the equivalent in terms of CO2 in this example. This is updated regularly by us um, and we will also help you, especially at the beginning, our environmental specialists to set up this system. Each eco event reference, and this is also going to be mentioned a few times more, has data on about 31 different impact categories. So right now we are in CO2, but if I switch to eutrophication, for instance, the tool switches to that output as well. It's important to note already, and maybe I'm already answering a question that might pop up. If you have primary data and you want to make a full LCA, according to one of the most popular standards, you also need to have primary data on these impact categories. If you just have CO2 data, the correlation later on can only be made with CO2 for that reason as well. Usage and emissions page, that's where we start. And um, this is usually data that can be extracted quite easily um, from, let's say, your plant manager or from your energy provider. And we will make sure that's allocated to the right environmental impact. The step after, and again, here you really see it's a system of allocation, is that we take a look at your total purchased materials. And this is naturally data that come, come out of your purchasing department. And what we do here, again, you can either have primary data or secondary data. So either your supplier provided you with an LCA. If they don't, we can use the power of EcoInvent there. So let's say you purchase HDPE. Um, we need to know the country where it comes from, maybe if you, the mixture of it, and then we can use the database to find the reference that gets close as possible to that material that you're purchasing. Again, we have about 30 environmental specialists in house here who have experience in a wide variety of industries. So we will help you in modeling this at the beginning. In the end, when we are taking a look at verification, an auditor will assess not the validity of this reference because EcoInvent has audited references, but rather does this get as close as possible to the actual situation. And here we take a look at total amount of kilos or liters dependent on the material that you are purchasing. Um, at this point, I would also like to highlight a different functionality and that's that you, the lock button that you can see here. Naturally, if you are handing over the, the tool to a third party verificator, we don't want you to uh, change the, the input afterwards. Um, so we can lock the input of an entire page and then after results can't be changed anymore and we can start the mass verification. As you might remember from my first slide about what an LCA consists of, we have a transport phase. And this is the transportation from your supplier to your facility. This is expressed in tons per kilometer in this example. And um, so again, here per material, we take a look uh, about the, the distance it traveled and the mode of transport. It's good to highlight that we have an Excel import data collection sheet. So this can be done all at once. And we usually can create a system to make it easier for you to, to fill out the Excel sheet. And we also assist you in this part of the data collection journey. That's, those are the main emissions on a company level. Um, since we are allocating and since we are going top down, the second step that we do is that we take a look at the different processes that are happening inside your facility. As mentioned, right now we are in uh, the environment of a manufacturer of pet bottles. So here we took a look at their different processes. It's the heating granulates, it's extrusion, injection molding, eventually cooling. And here we also modeled packaging. And this is quite a journey for some companies because we work from large chemical companies to smaller companies who have, who have easier processes. But what we usually want to do here to start with companies is that when you have a lot of different processes, we can combine them also at the beginning, visualize the hotspots, and then we can break them up into smaller pieces. In this example, it's just five processes because it's quite an easy product, but we are fully scalable to adapt more complicated production processes for that reason. What we did earlier in the tool 
um, is that we defined the impact of the electricity and we defined the impact of the natural gas and all the other emissions at the top. Right now, we will allocate them to the right processes. And there's two ways to do this. First, if you don't have meters, smart meters or dumb meters, any meters on your, in your facility, um, we will use a percentage allocation. This can be done also based on our own experience or standard references of processes, for instance. But if you do have meters, we can allocate it directly to the different processes inside your facility. Once we have done that, we know per process basically what the environmental impact is and how, it's, how the top emissions are distributed from there. What we do after, and here again, the, the main word of today is economies of scale. And the main word of today is also allocation, as mentioned. What we do here is that we import the product portfolio. This again can be done through Excel, for instance. And here we take a look at all the different products that, are in, that you are producing. What we often see, and that's especially for the larger companies also, um, is that companies might have a lot of different SKUs or line items, which can also be combined under certain products. So maybe you have a product that has a few different labels and a few different languages, or maybe a few different colors. Here we will also make the assessment to correlate it to the right line items. And there are some official LCA standards about the boundaries of this. Um, it's about 5% or 10% of impact that, that it can differentiate um, from each other to call the product group like this. What we do after is that we take a look at your total production amounts here. And um, there's two reasons for this. First of all, you want to also see, and I will visualize this later on in the results, which of your products has the biggest impact in terms of total production? Because you might have a product that you don't manufacture a lot. It has a very high impact, but maybe a different one that is your top seller that you might also want to improve on or visualize to bring down your total impact. Second reason is that we also do a mass balance check at this point. So of course we are allocating throughout the system and we want to know also if everything lines up and we'll have some alarms later in the tool also if this isn't the case without sound at the moment. What we do after, and this is really the, the last step of the allocation, one of the last steps, um, is that we link the materials to the bill of materials of the products. So again, earlier on, we defined the impact of PET and we defined the impact of the bottle cap or the label. And now we link them as a system of allocation to the right products after. This can be done on a very large scale, as mentioned, also with large bill of materials. Later on, when I finish the demo, I will show you some more complex products also. But again, here, everything has been predefined from a top-down approach, which enables the mass production of LCAs afterwards. The last step that we take here, and then uh, we can do the first part of the Q&A, um, is that we link the right products to the right processes. So very often you might have a product or that doesn't go to the entire production line, or you might have different types of production lines in your facility. Here we link them to the right processes. And again, allocation, the processes have been predefined and pre-modeled, and now we just let the right amount of products flow through them. It can be done either by production amount or by weight, and we will make the assessment together with you at that point also and how we model this in the right fashion. That's the input page and that's the work that has to be done. It's still not a magic button, so it does require um, effort to collect this data. Um, but we as EcoChain always try to visualize it as a journey for that reason. There's a very important saying that I like to use often, and that is don't let perfect stand in the way of good. When you don't have all this data available at the beginning, we can start more with general references, or we can start more with database um, references, for instance. After on, we will visualize the hotspots, and those can be focus areas to focus on at the beginning. We almost never encounter companies with primary data for all of this. It's very natural to perceive this as an ongoing process for that reason. 
There we finalize the input page. Since we have 45 minutes of today, um, I would just assess Cradle to gate LCAs. We can model the use and end of life. Sazla, maybe we, we can put a first Q&A moment in there before we um, transition to visualize the results after. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm also here with, uh, with Floris, just to make sure that all your questions are sorted and get answered. And there's a lot of great questions in here. So as Floris said, uh, the first part was all about the data collection, which is of course a, a lot of work. So, you know, that's why we thought it would be good to have a Q and A here as well. Um, and there's a lot of great questions coming in. So the first question I wanted to discuss with you, Floris, is how can software take data of thousands of products, like how can you do that? Because I can imagine, you know, a hundred, but what if you even have more than those? Yeah, great question. And it's also the origin where we came from, of course, um, as EcoChain. We started in the construction sector. Right now we are active in medical, textile, packaging, a lot of different industries, but this is where the problem first arose. And um, here it started in, in concrete production or asphalt production, a lot of different compositions, a lot of different mixtures. And what you need to do then is first take a look at your materials um, and then allocate them after to the right products. If I would show you the system the other way around, it would take way longer because you just simply can't do the allocation the, the other direction. So once we defined the impact of the different materials, then we link them to the bill of materials of a product, not the other way around. And by doing so, you have this top-down allocation system and it allows for the mass verification, as mentioned earlier. Yeah. So thousands of products, only way to do it is start at the top. And the only way to do it is to take it in-house because you want to have this data and you want to be able to add to it or enrich it without having to call a consultant or to go externally. You need to have this in-house if you have large product portfolios. Thank you. Um, then I have a couple of questions actually uh, covering the same topic, um, yeah. which is, uh, what do you do if there might not be a certain substance or material available in eco invent? Uh, how do we approach that? Again, very relevant question. Also, um, there's two ways to do this. Um, the first is to find a reference or maybe even combine references that gets close to your material for that reason. In the end, this is also a verification process, third-party verification. Is this reference as close as possible to your current situation as is? Then based on that, you would also notice if this material might be a hotspot in your product or maybe in your entire company. And you can leverage this data also to talk to your suppliers to maybe extract more data from them. In addition, there's also quite some research being done or open databases. So as EcoChain, we often also for some of our clients modeled references ourselves. And also, again, this can be a combination of combining certain references for that reason. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Um, then uh, there's another question, actually, next to the IncoInvent inventory. So IncoInvent is one of the main databases that we have. Which other databases and methods does Helix or our software in general contain? Yeah, and we have some more uh, niche databases that we can also use. Um, but I think it's also important to notice that we can always input primary data also. So if you might have received data yourself to use, you can always put this in. At the moment, we don't have a direct link to Gabi. Um, there's also a reason for that. And because Gabi doesn't allow other companies to use their database. And um, this also excludes them, I think, from a future because we see that for that reason now, also from a European directive, EcoInvent is being adopted into a lot of different LCA standards. That's why we're also happy to stay with this one. All right, then how does the tool handle different company facilities that might differ in their processes, right? Uh, let's say you have a company that has a hundred manufacturing plants globally. Yep. Um, how do you account for differences in data? First of all, we, we click especially well with companies with multiple production facilities. And I will showcase this later on in the tool at the results page. In the end, that's why we're called eco chain, because we can link different factories together. But in the end, um, I usually help companies and we always start with companies with one production location. Yeah. Here we assess the data, we build up a system 
also that works for both and everyone involved. And we use this to expand from one factory to let's say five using the same data input, using the same processes. We then train a company to usually um, continue the implementation further where we move more to a support basis. But because it's a gradual increase, they can all adhere to the same system. We never start 100 factories at once because we recognize that there needs to be data singularity for that reason. That's why we expand like this from one to five, five to 10, 10 to 30, and so on to make sure that this is done in the right way. Super, thank you. Then the last uh, question I have for you now, how much time would it approximately take to collect all the data required for this? It's a question without a direct answer, I believe. Um, depends on a few um, things that we are agreeing on together between EcoChain and you in the future. First of all, what is the data you already have available? And in what way is the data structured? As yeah. mentioned, we have our own preferred way of data input. So we will take a look together with you and how we can e the most easy and effective way extract this data and put it into the system. Yeah. Also helps for that reason that before we start with you, you already might talk to some stakeholders in your company, purchasing department, finance sometimes also, product designers, and who all might have a small responsibility or more ownership in parts of the data. But to give a point to it, when we take a look at data collection, usually it's about 30% of the entire pro project and it's based per facility. So let's say a month, um, but it goes down exponentially. With my, my larger clients, we are doing new factories in about two to three weeks, for instance, for that reason. And we might have spent especially time at the beginning to set up a system of data collection before. And it's great because if you have the data collection done, that's also a big chunk of all the work done already. Yeah. Super. All right. Then um, I'm leaving this for now. So the floor is back to you, Floris. It was already, but let's dive into Helix again. Great. Thank you. This was the input page as mentioned. And also to repeat, if you have any further questions, I'm very happy to um, elaborate on them further. But for the sake of time, I'm going to go to the results now. Because we did this work. And we did this allocation. And of course, now it's also time to take a look what this allocation does for you. What we can do once we have set this up is generate LCAs of the entire product portfolio. And first I'm going to show you the overview and the, basically the dashboard that we generate. And later on, I'm also going to show you some more specialized reports, but I will start with this page. This was a manufacturer of PET bottles, as mentioned. So right now, here we can see all the PET bottles that we defined earlier. And in this overview, green is the impact of the materials with different dropdowns and um, a lot more detail as you can go into the specific reference after. Orange is the impact of the different processes. So here we can see that early on, we divide the heating of the granulates. We can see that it correlates to this electricity mix, for instance, and the transport of the product. This is very visual. And we often see that um, sales or marketing departments are also um, granted access to the tool because this speaks to non-LCA experts. Okay, this can be communicated externally quite easily for that reason. Then what you can do, um, as mentioned, is take a look at maybe the total production too. So here we can see, okay, of all the products that I produce in totality, which one has the biggest impact? And maybe where can we focus on to reduce um, that impact as well? Something I would quickly like to highlight, and, and as mentioned, I can go deeper into in different sessions, is that we can also model the full life cycle. So here we model two bottles that are used that are using recycled material you can see that they actually have a lower impact a negative impact at the beginning of their lca behind every pie diagram that we see here and um, there's of course an official lca overview and and afterwards i will show you the the outputs that we can get from there um, but this is the entire product portfolio and its overview um, in this example, um, it's about 80 products. If you have some time, I can also show you what a product portfolio of about 800 products looks like. 
And if you have different line items that might correlate to an LCA, we can also specify that in the descriptions after. This is important and this can really help you to not have 20 different Excel tabs and, and maybe a different output. This is a visual tool to be used by a lot of different stakeholders in your company. All the data here can be exported to Excel at any moment also, um, the same as the import functionality. In addition to the product portfolio overview, as mentioned, we can also consolidate different factories into your overview account. So in this example, we were in an environment of this pet bottle factory, but we can consolidate different factories here to also see the ind individual impact of those factories and eventually maybe also test out whatever produces a product in a different facility. Then you want to see the hotspots in your processes because again, we, we, we modeled the processes earlier and allocated the products to them so you can see where your biggest impact in terms of processes lie. This can also be a way larger number of processes, but for the simplicity of this demo, we model around five. And you see the different impacts of the different materials that you use. So for this manufacturer, um, they, it's a simple product again, but they used PET and recycled PET, and they can also benchmark uh, the different materials. And what you can even do is model um, a supplier um, in the, for that reason. And you can see the individual impact of the materials that they supplied, for instance. And finally, for the, the visually orientated people, in this webinar, uh, we have a full overview of every product, every process it went through, and in the end, every emission it correlated to as well. A very important functionality because this is, of course, a very nice visual and very easy to use tool, but you want to show full reports to your stakeholders as well. So that's why we have a functionality um, to generate reports for either all your different products at once or for single products. And here we can make different reporting templates. This can be according to upcoming standards, maybe EPD standards also, especially the NEN 15804. But we can also make different custom reporting templates there. It might have your company logo, it might have different things that you want on there. But this is basically then a doc document generator after that highlights everything we did earlier. So it highlights the study, it highlights the um, um, calculation method that we used, the scope, the, the reference units, and this can all be generated on a very large scale at once and can be handed over to, to your stakeholders and can be verified for that reason. So from, let's say, level one understanding, people who just need a pie diagram, to a full 17 page LCA report, uh, we can go both directions in terms of complexity and reporting standards in there. Maybe it's good to use the last, I see we have seven minutes left for today. Um, maybe highlight some questions about the results. I hope they speak for themselves, but I, I can understand there might be some, some more feedback required. Do you have some questions, Salazala, that, that I can maybe address? Yes, I do have some questions. One person here says, we just saw that in a, uh, one of the, the results you showed that an LCA or an impact category was negative. Does that ever show or how can that come to be? Yeah, the, the first slide I started with um, highlights the different phases of an LCA. So production, process, um, transport, use and end of life, of course. But this circle can be never ending. For that reason, if you are using a material that's recycled, you can start with a negative impact for that reason. And we can model this as well. And so that might create a negative impact um, to lower the impact of your product. Um, there are some different calculation methods for this. And the one we are using right now, we count it as negative. In the end, it can be dependent on the calculation method that you use, how we deal with this. All right. Super. Thank you. Um, so this is also really nice. Uh, of course, in LCA, there are multiple impact categories. Uh, yeah. So this person is actually asking, could you maybe visualize what it looks like for another impact category? Of course. As mentioned, we have data on a lot of different impact categories. So if I switch to eutrophication in this example, you see that the output switch is there as well. Or maybe I might switch it to um, 
acidification, you can see there's a different impact for that too. In the end, these are consolidated in the LCA report that you would get. Um, we are more and more seeing now also in the industry um, that there are being used of a single score, for instance, where you can allocate different input categories or rate them in a certain manner. And we are also flexible to adopt to this if these has, have been set. Yeah. But I see a lot, apparently in the apparel industry, for instance, water use is almost equally important as CO2 as an input. So you might also want to visualize these two next to each other um, as two impact categories, as an example. Super, thank you. Then there's another person who asks, how does the verification work? You have this overview now, you just showed the LCA report. So you're here. How do you go from this to verified results? We can start an audit project as visualized here. Um, and this um, here, we, of course, you need to lock the year from there. You could see earlier that I could lock individual pages, but here you can do it as a whole. And then here we will, this is a process that I can't fully walk through in four minutes, unfortunately, but this basically enables an auditor to do the mass verification after. And the tool is especially user-friendly for auditors for that reason, um, to enable this process too. I'm very happy to, to plan an individual session with the person who asked this, so we can walk through it. Super, thank you. This is actually quite interesting too. Of course, we are not the only LCA providers out there, yeah. right? There are a couple of others. And this person specifically asks, okay, these bulk LCAs that you just show in your results, how do we differ to one-click LCA? So for the people who don't know, one-click LCA is indeed also an LCA software provider, but they work specifically in construction. Florists, can you tell a little bit more about the differences between us and one-click LCA? Yeah. I think the top-down approach that we are using is quite unique, this allocation system for that reason. And that's also, of course, the heritage where we come from. And that's why we Helix, specifically Helix, clicks especially well with large product portfolios for that reason. We have a lot of knowledge in-house also to model that correctly and to verify that in the right way. That's a very big benefit that we have. So the top-down approach, economies of skill and mass verification is something we are really different in for that reason. Yeah. Another very important part there um, is that we want you to use the software. We want to enable you to use the software yourself. So that almost every page and every effort has been put here to make it understandable, to make it adoptable, and to make it user-friendly to be used by you. And I think that's a very big difference in our approach compared to different um, LCA calculation tools. We are software for non-LCA experts to be adopted for that reason. And it's something we especially visualize and would like to show you there. Um, and I think it's it's also our track record. Um, we work from huge corporate companies to small value impact brands. Um, and in here we have, we have created really great results um, industry-wide also. So I mentioned textile. In the medical industry, we are far um, electronic devices. Um, so we can use that through our different industries too. Great. All right. So looking at the time, I'm afraid we need to start rounding up. Um, Flores, there's one last question that I do yeah. think is important. Uh, people are asking about the pricing. So how does this usually work? Because Helix yeah. is, of course, a little bit different than our other tool, Mobius. Yeah, of course. And it's a very valid question to ask. And the answer to that is, again, I'm repeating this word too much, economies of skill. Um, so we have a license based on production location. Um, and this has unlimited amount of users an unlimited amount of functionalities also. So with one license for a production location, you can do anything that you see here. Pricing for that ranges between five to 10K, depending on the size of your production location. But then you can divide this on all the LCAs that you generate out of it. So I think I, I dropped the fact that we are proud of that sometimes we could make an LCA for around five euros. If you are, have thousands of products, you can divide it by this license cost. And that's in the enterprise per LCA. Includes all functionalities. Second component is then the consulting that we provide for you. And that could be training or onboarding. And that's dependent, of course, on your needs. But it's lower usually than the licensing. Super, thank you. Great last question. 
thank you all for, for joining. Flores, final floor back to you. Yeah, thank you too, Sasala. And I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to see this. I understand there might be follow-up questions, and but I would like to assure everyone that we did this for companies who are at the beginning of their journey, where we help companies to go further at the end even. So whenever you are in that journey, I hope we can help you uh, as well. Thank you.